there was a time when owning a BlackBerry commanded respect and admiration, not only because it was the smartest phone on the market, but also because it symbolized class and luxury. It became so addictive that it earned the nickname Crackberry. BlackBerry was the fastest selling tech innovation and the most profitable mobile device company of its time. However, in the ever evolving landscape of technology, what is popular and sought after today can quickly fade away. Well, in the case of BlackBerry phone, it did not disappear overnight, but gradually declined due to newer innovations. Today, we're introducing three revolutionary products. But before we get into all of that, let's go back in time to the 1980s, where two young University of Waterloo students started a small company that would evolve into BlackBerry. The period from the 1980s to the early 2000s was a defining era in the tech world, marked by innovations and developments that laid the foundation for much of the technology we use today. So, very rapidly, uh, the process of the integration of personal computers into the society will be accomplished. It's a great machine. It's a, a step forward in terms of uh, the way it uses graphics and the speed. And it's a very, very useful machines. This is the uh, first office of Amazon.com Inc. Well, that was the summer of 95. I had no money whatsoever. Uh, I was working, uh, doing research in Silicon Valley on a completely different subject and trying to start this company at the same time. When we first launched, we were hoping for, you know, maybe 400, 500 people. Harvard didn't have a Facebook, so that's the gap that we were trying to fill. It was at this time that pagers became more popular and sophisticated. Now for those who don't know what pagers are, they are telecommunication devices that receives and displays alphanumeric or voice messages. Now it's important to note that there are two types of pagers, the one-way pager which only receive messages, while two-way pagers receive and send messages using internal transmitters. Pagers were developed in the 1950s and 1960s and became more advanced and widely used from the 1980s up until the late 90s. During this period, the advent of second-generation digital cellular networks allowed pagers and GSM to send short message service and also receive more complex messages. Luckily for Mike Lazaridis and Douglas Fredgen, it was around this period they founded Research in Motion. But were they really lucky as at the time? So a quick one guys, after watching this video till the very end, kindly like, share, drop a comment and subscribe to the channel for more videos such as these. Thank you so much, I really do appreciate you. Now let's jump back into the video. Research in Motion was co-founded in 1984 by Mike Lazaridis and Douglas Fredgen, who were electrical engineering students at the University of Waterloo. Initially, Research in Motion started as a software and computer science consulting business with just about eight staff members, including Mike and Douglas, operating from a small office in Waterloo, Ontario. Now, at that time, Research in Motion had built a device called Pocket Link, which Mike and Douglas felt was the future of tech. Mike and Douglas, the founders of Research in Motion, were in their need of investors, which was the main reason they embarked on a series of sales campaigns. During one of their numerous campaigns, Mike and Douglas encountered a businessman named Jim Bosley. While their meeting with Bosley did not yield positive results, a twist of fate occurred when Bosley was dismissed from his position at Sutherland Schultz due to issues with his temperament. This development motivated Bosley to accept Mike's proposal and join Research in Motion as co-CEO. With Bosley's relentless drive for success and Mike's technical expertise, Research in Motion was on the path to greatness. The first step towards global success came in 1996 when the company developed the Pager 900. This two-way Pager featured a QWERTY keyboard and was capable of sending faxes and emails, making Research in Motion pioneers of this technology in America at the time. This innovation would eventually lay the groundwork for the smartphone known as BlackBerry. The first BlackBerry device was released on the 19th of January 1999. It was a two-way pager called the BlackBerry 850 developed by Research in Motion. 
This device was notable for its ability to send and receive emails, which was a groundbreaking feature at the time. The BlackBerry 850 laid the foundation for the company's future smartphones, which became popular in the early to mid 2000s. After the release of the BlackBerry 850 in 1999, the next significant BlackBerry to be released was the BlackBerry 5810 in 2002, which was their first device to incorporate mobile phone capabilities because it was one of the early Java-based devices. It ran on a 2G network, made use of headphones and it further integrated email and telephone features. After the release of BlackBerry 5810, the next significant BlackBerry to be released was the BlackBerry 7290 in year 2004. It was a significant device because it was one of the first to offer colored models, Bluetooth connection, wireless LAN connection, also, most of the models in the 1700 series had 16 megabyte storage. Now, with the 1700 series in the market, it was obvious that BlackBerry was onto something great and global domination in coming years was inevitable. After the release of the 1700 series, BlackBerry embarked on a series of new releases. They introduced the 800 series between 2006 to 2009, followed by the 900 series between 2008 to 2013. It's important to note that during this 10-year period, BlackBerry had already achieved global dominance and became a symbol of class. It was also during this period that the BlackBerry Messenger feature was introduced to the device in the year 2005. The BlackBerry Messenger feature was one of the main reasons why BlackBerry earned the name CrackBerry as it allowed users to instantly send messages to each other over the internet and these messages were sent using the BlackBerry PIN system. Now for those who don't know what the BlackBerry PIN system means, kindly listen. What is first of all pin to pin messaging? Um, it looks very similar to an email. However, Unlike your emails uh, that you would send on the BlackBerry, pin-to-pin -pin messaging is not dependent on the email system. It just relies on the BlackBerry infrastructure. As a result, pin messages are quick, they're actually faster and even more reliable than texting. The PIN system also provided an additional layer of security and privacy as messages were sent directly between devices over the BlackBerry network. Users could communicate without the need to have each other's phone numbers which was an advantage for maintaining privacy. Also, sending messages was possible through dedicated chat groups, which allowed up to 30 BlackBerry users to communicate within a single group chat. BlackBerry Messenger also allowed users to send pictures, videos, voice notes, files, and also real-time location on a map. So with all of these features and global dominance, what ultimately led to BlackBerry's downfall? At its peak between 2009 to 2014, BlackBerry controlled 50% of the Nigerian smartphone market, 70% of the African smartphone market, 50% of the United States smartphone market, and 20% of the smartphone market in the world. Or more, that's massive. <laughs> Now, BlackBerry's downfall did not happen overnight. Just like in the case of Tugu and Mr. Biggs, BlackBerry's downfall was gradual, largely due to the emergence of other smartphones during that era that offered better durability, functionality, and unique features. Today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. Three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Now, being the king of the smartphone market at the time, BlackBerry did not see other emerging smartphones like iPhone, Samsung, and others as a threat because they believed their dominance was unrivaled. However, problem came knocking on their door when users started making comparisons between BlackBerry phone speculations and other devices. For example, a major ground for comparison then was the camera and picture quality between BlackBerry phones and iPhones. More problems came 
when the release of Blackberry Storm was received with a lot of backlash. The Storm failed due to numerous reasons other than its touchscreen alone. You could also attribute Blackberry's decline to its failure to adapt to the demand of the market at that time because users were interested in phones with quick touch response and fast functionality which blackberry phones lacked at the time as customers reported several performance issues such as lagging and freezing meanwhile other smartphone giants listened to the everyday customer their devices were about convenience and accessibility. Another key reason behind BlackBerry's failure was its loyalty to its operating system despite some obvious flaws. One issue with BlackBerry's early operating system versions was the number of apps we could download from the BlackBerry app world compared to what we could download from iPhone app store. Interestingly, only a few of the most sought after apps eventually became available on BlackBerry app world. However, those apps were not as updated or feature rich compared to their counterparts on the iPhone App Store. Now, the truth is, BlackBerry's glory days in the smartphone world are long gone because on the 4th of January 2022, BlackBerry officially shut down its phone operating system, which means smartphones running on its operating system will no longer receive updates or support, and key functions like phone calls, text messaging, and other features will no longer reliably work. Now, the truth is, you will probably never use a BlackBerry smartphone again, but you certainly may utilize its technology in one way or another, because much of BlackBerry's services these days have shifted from hardware to software as they now focus on providing software services for cybersecurity organizations and smart vehicle companies. Now, BlackBerry software is in 215 million cars. It could be powering your car's infotainment system or securing its connected and driver assist features. While it's true that companies like Apple had a clearer long-term vision for consumer smartphones, many of BlackBerry's challenges were of its own making, just like the case of Mr. Biggs and to go. Thank you so much for sticking till the end. I really do appreciate you and I will see you in the next video shortly.